Hey everyone, so today we are going to be doing a little sit down video for a new series I'm going to call Girl Talk. Now, it's not all just, you know, stuff for girls, it's definitely stuff that guys can get advice from too, it's just some of the stuff is going to be more targeted towards women. So, yeah. So today's first ever Girl Talk segment is going to be on toxic friendships or just toxic relationships in general. So I'm going to start off the video by telling you guys about a toxic friendship that I have had in my recent history. So to kind of like give you guys a point of view on a toxic relationship that I've had and I'm also going to be telling you guys about a, another type of toxic relationship that I have experienced. So for my toxic friendship, I'm going to be giving this person a different name and we are going to call them Elijah. So I don't know why, but it's Elijah now. So Elijah and I had, had known each other since we were probably like 12 or 13 when I had moved to his school. And we would like talk and stuff, but we weren't like buddy buddy until we got to high school when we would start hanging out more as friends it was just a friendship and it was cool and we had the same class together and it was fun but i started kind of noticing and it still kind of happens now too and i'm not in high school anymore where like they elijah will text me only if he needs something like if i text him asking him oh hey do you want to go do this or hey how are you like anything that I'll text him he won't answer me unless he needs something from me and that's not really a friend that's more of somebody kind of trying to like alert like merch off of you you know and it really kind of started to bother me so to a point where like I unfollowed this person and stuff on Instagram because I just didn't want to have to deal with it anymore and he will still like call me and be like oh hey so like this happened like he'll like talk to me about like all like the bad things are going on but only if nobody else answers him first is when he'll call me and like I'll answer and I'll be nice about it I'm like oh no I'm so sorry that, that happened like you know you can talk to me, like whatever and I'll do that but like internally I know that if I ever needed something he would not be there in return so that's kind of like where the toxic Part comes in where you should not feel like you have to be there for someone when you know for a fact that they don't give a shit about you like if they literally and you know for a fact they just don't give a fuck about you then why like even deal with it you know like I could call him upset about something and he would just be like oh yeah cool whatever it's like this happened to me and that's not a good friend and you shouldn't have to deal with that you are a great person and you should have friends that see that and like that would be there for you too which he just was not and there were even a few instances in high school where like somebody would come up to me and be like oh Elijah told me this like is this true about like things about me that was not true at all and it would be like really like not great stuff like I had said something terrible like at one point somebody came up to me and was like oh Elijah told me that you called me a whore and I was like I never said that like I would never call somebody that to anybody like that's horrible and I would never do that and he was going around telling people that I, that I was calling them stuff which was so not nice and so rude and so not accurate like I just don't understand why someone would do that but yeah that was def that was like a, not a great moment for me and I'm like nobody ever like took it hard or believed him because he was definitely like a boy who cried wolf type of person and but it still like got to me that like oh my gosh people are being told that I'm saying these things I'm not saying by somebody who acts like my friend and it took me until like this year after grad like after high school and everything and to realize that that's not a friend and he is not my friend and he never was my friend I was his friend and he never treated me like a friend never like anything I'm not a kind of person who'll be like 
I need a thank you or whatever like I don't like you can call me and talk to me and like don't say thank you like I am here for you I just the satisfaction of knowing that like I could have made you feel better is enough for me but for you to like never be there if I need you wasn't a very good situation to be in because it kind of it kind of fucks with your head like I'm sorry for my language but like it really does it kind of makes you feel like you aren't worth that person's time when in reality it's the other way around and they are not worth your time because they're the one who is toxic another type of toxic relationship is a romantic relationship I have never had this like personally to like an, an extent like a like a full-on blown relationship but I've definitely talked to a guy before who would be like trying to tell me how my life is going to be and what I am going to do and what I can and cannot do which was just not okay with me and this was actually recent and that's something that you should never deal with like if somebody if you are in a relationship and they are trying to tell you what to do that is a toxic relationship not if it's like advice if it's advice then like fine but like telling you like this person was telling me that it once like we're married and have children i can't work i have to be a stay-at-home mom for the rest of my life and that's like i'm okay with stay-at-home moms my mom was a stay-at-home mom for a while but I personally would want to go back to work once my kids were like old enough to take care of themselves at home. We could be home alone, you know, like when they're 12 or something. But he was just like, no, you're not going to do that. And I'm like, we're not even in a relationship yet, bro. Like, bye. But I know I've known people who have been in a toxic relationship where it'd be like on again, off again of the opposite person messing with their head and being like oh no like I love you and then like the next day being like oh no you shouldn't do that like you're worthless you shouldn't be like this you shouldn't be like that don't do this and that is not okay if someone is treating you like that that is toxic and you need to get out of that situation and if it's a hard situation to get out of and you don't know what to do there are people who you can talk to you know whether it be a school counselor or a teacher or a parent or your friend or your sibling or whoever it may be, there's somebody who cares about you and who can help you get out of these kinds of situations before they escalate. Because toxic relationships can definitely escalate into stuff that can really hurt you and really affect you in negative ways, and you need to get out of them before it gets to that extreme. And if you feel like you don't have somebody to talk to, you definitely do. There are helplines who you can talk to, you can talk to, you know, there are people out there who want to help you and that will help you and that you just need to let them help you because when you do and once you get out of that toxic relationship then you just open up a door to find who you are and who you want to be and who you can eventually love you know and then once you figure out who you are and you're back to yourself and understand that you don't deserve that kind of relationship, you can find someone who will love you for you. And that goes for romantic relationships and friendship relationships. And if you aren't sure if it's a toxic relationship or you feel like it's not but people around you are saying that it's are, maybe you should listen to the people on the outside because they have a different perspective than you. Like if your mom is saying that they don't like this person, maybe you should think about that. Or, you know, if you are finding that you always have to defend this person, it shouldn't be like that. I had a friendship in 10th grade, I want to say, with this person. We'll name her... We'll name her Rose. And Rose and I were very good friends, but I found that I always had to defend her to my family. And that that just eventually had to come to an end and her and I kind of stopped hanging out because it wasn't fair to me. I shouldn't always have to be defending someone to my mom or my sister or my other friends even. Like, that's not fair. And I shouldn't have to be defending her to myself, you know, like trying to rationalize why she's acting like this and why she's trying to hurt me. Like, that was not a good friendship, and 
you know, I had to think about what my mom was telling me and realize that, you know, maybe I'm wrong and maybe that this is not a good friendship to be in because she is hurting me. Like, I would cry at night to my mom about her because it was just such a hard time because I thought she was my friend, but she was just tearing me down constantly. And I remember laying in bed with my mom, just like crying so hard and her coming into my room at night and seeing me texting this person on my phone and I was crying because they were hurting, like they were being mean to me. And I'm not a person, like I definitely cry easily at like sad things and like really emotional things or something makes me happy, I'll cry. But like where it comes to people hurting me and like my own personal like emotional feelings, I don't cry that much like I honestly don't I just prefer to like bury it down and be like you'll get through this but that was a really hard time because she was really hurting me and we at the time we had some of the same classes so then she would have like her friends be treating me the same way that she was with calling me like you know names and telling me that I need to grow up and telling me that I need you know all this crazy stuff or calling me a quitter and like because I you know all this crazy stuff that just hurt because it just didn't make sense to me why my friend who was supposed to be there for me would be calling me these things and she would talk badly about like my family and like all this stuff and she didn't even know my entire family at the time like my entire immediate family because my dad brother and sister live, lived in a different state so she hadn't even like met them yet and she would be talking about them to people at school which were just like, it was not cool and it hurt. And you know, I eventually I take a step back and think, I'm like, do I want this kind of person in my life? And I did, I was done with it. I was done being sad, done feeling like shit about myself and done with her talking bad about my family. Like that's one thing that I don't do is people talking bad about my family. Like fine, be mean to me, but do not bring my family into it and she definitely did and it was not nice and it was not a good situation to be in so I had to take a step back and I did and I was so much happier for it and I was so thankful to my mom for kind of helping me figure out how to navigate that and how to take a step back and not be involved in this person who was just so hurtful anymore. So ways that you can take a step back from people like this is just start hanging out with them less and start texting them less. Like be short with your text messages. If they ask if you want to go hang out, just be like, oh, I can't tonight, I'm sorry. And eventually they'll kind of stop and like start like weaning away from you too because you're not answering them and you don't want to go out with them. And so they'll kind of start trying to find other people to hang out with, which honestly, that was what I did for the last story I told you. And it was great um, because I didn't have to go through the confrontation. I'm not a confrontational person. So I didn't have to go through the confrontation of being like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. So that was just like kind of how my mom told me to do it. It was like, you don't have to be rude to her. You don't have to hurt her feelings. You can just start saying no when she wants you to go out. And eventually she'll stop asking. And my mom was right. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what happened. And no feelings were hurt because I didn't want to hurt her feeling. Another thing you can do if you're like a little bit more savage, which is what I did in the first friendship I told you about with Elijah, was that I just unfollowed him from social media because I was like, you know what, maybe he'll get the hint that I'm kind of done with this because whenever I need something, he isn't there for me. And that's what I did and I mean, he'll still text me sometimes with like his problems and I mean, I'll answer because I don't want to be rude, but I don't have to go out of my way to hang out with him anymore and I don't have to talk to him if I don't want to and he is starting to see that I think. Like those are just the two ways that I personally have done it. If you're braver than me, then you can just like talk to them and be like, yo, I'm done, but I could not have done that for like the life of me. Like that would have been too much. Like panic inducing confrontation no thank you okay everyone so that's it for this video i know it's kind of like all over the place but i was just kind of trying to speak from like the heart and just like get it out there it's kind of like a rant video to also help all of you guys 
So, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did and you want to see more girl talk videos, give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below on what you would like to see for advice next time. And, yeah, I'll see y'all next time. Bye!